Hi, this is Adam Gilmore again. This is the third video in a series of videos demonstrating how uh, to use the Meta app. Uh, in this video, I am going to demonstrate creating a parent child hierarchy, demonstrating role play dimensions and facts, and demonstrate uh, what we call a derived staging table. So, a derived staging table is a staging table that has other staging tables as its source. Uh, sometimes this is called a transform layer in the uh, Kimball methodology. And typically you'd use it for things like uh, allocations and aggregations. So I'm going to start with creating an employee parent child dimension. So to do that, what I need to do is create a derived staging table. And the point of that derived staging table is to establish the uh, relationship from an employee to their parent employee or the employee that they report to. Now to do that in our little demonstration source database is we have a position table. And that position table has a position code and a reports to position code. So the hierarchy is on position code, it's not on, on not an employee. So we need to do some work to transform that into a hierarchy from employee to employee. So to do that I have a little uh, SQL query. So what this query does is it first selects all your employees and joins up to the position table based on the employee code of the employee table back to the placement employee code of the position table. Then it joins to the position table again and it us the reports to position. And then we join our position table, uh, taking the reports to position code from that position table, and we join to the reports to table based on the position code. So here we have a hierarchy of position to the position that it reports to. Then we take our employee code and we pull the placement employee code from the reports to version of our position and that becomes our parent employee code. So effectively what we have a hierarchy is employee code to the parent employee code. So what I'm going to do in the model is I'm going to create a derived station table. The first step is to create a new uh, connection. And that connection is back to our staging table. So effectively what we're saying is that our staging database becomes a, another source and we need to select uh, add And save that. One thing to be aware of is the word staging and warehouse are reserved words. So you can't use, uh, under these database connections or the connection monitors, you can't use the word staging and you can't use the word warehouse. That's reserved for uh, configuration and uh, for staging data from data warehouse databases. Okay, so I've created that connection, I've created the source system. For that stage again, and the important thing here is to use the word derived. Right, now I'm going to create my derived staging table. So create me, my resource system is stage. The table name is count and volume, of course. It's important to tick the right because that will affect uh, how the table is named in the staging database. So in this case, it would be named the right underscore and parent employee. Right. Now I can't in import the schema from the table because the table doesn't exist. So what I will do is just create the names of the columns. Not create the columns that I use. Employee code. And parent employee code. Mm 
Then it also has some logs. Now I want to define the x cut that uh, x cut is about from the source. The extract pattern is for extract. The source is coming from the connection string stage, and in this case, it's not a table of view. We are actually using a source query. So I go back to my source query here. I just pick up that code, and I'll drop that into our source query, and click nothing. And it's mapped those outer columns and query code and parent and query code to our station columns. So source columns and query code, parent and query code to and query code and parent and query code to station columns. Okay, let's save that. So now we've got our derived station table. What do we want to do with that? Well, we want to create a parent child hierarchy in the query dimension. So in this case, I go and open my query dimension. And I add an attribute. And the name of the attribute will be Mount Employee Code. And that is a var char thing again. We will choose type 2 in this case because we want to know when this relationship changes. And then to simply create this as the attribute which defines the parent child hierarchy, we just simply click it as parent. Okay, so now we want to choose the ETL and we need to update the transformation in this case to show how to fill that parent employee code uh, attribute. So we go to our staging sources and we need to add a new drone. So we need to bring in our current employee staging table that has that information about that relationship. So we choose the current employee staging table, we choose to bring in the current employee code, and we define how we want to join between those two things. Okay, so I'll just paste in that query. So what we're doing here is we are joining from our employee table by employee code to the derived parent employee table employee code. And we're pulling out from that uh, parent employee table, we're pulling out the parent employee code column. So now I go to my transforms and you can see we've got our new parent employee code attribute in our list. And I want to select the parent employee station table and the parent employee code. And just mark it there. And save that. Okay, so now we've defined a parent child hierarchy in our employee dimension. Let's go and generate the code and see what that looks like. Okay, so our generation is complete. We're going to open the SSIS project. Okay, and I will open the um, SSIS package for the employee dimension. So essentially what has changed from the previous version of this SSIS package is this new uh, control flow component has been added. And this control flow component updates the parameters. So what this does is effectively it's an update statement which uh, updates the parent code parent SP. So a new parent SP has been added, uh, SP done for surrogate has been added to the employee table. And this piece of code goes and updates that um, SP to define the relationship between records in the, in the dimension. Okay, so now what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, creating a role play dimension. So to do that, what we're going to do first is go into our time record. And up until this point, we haven't related the time record fact to our employee dimension. So that's what I'll do first. So to do that, you click on this dimensionality tab 
and if that associate the fact with its dimensions. What I've done is I've chosen the employee dimension, so I want to associate this fact with that dimension. And I need to go into the ETL and uh, edit the transformation. So I'm editing the transformation so I can uh, define how when we're processing the fact we look up the employee dimension. Right, so when I go here and I look at these dimension lookups, I can see my employee dimension and there's no lookup expression. I double click here and I see, okay, configure the cell key lookup for the dimension employee. So we have a business key called employee code. And of course we want to use something from our staging table to look up, the staging tables to look up the employee code. We only have the time record, staging table at this point, and we don't have an employee code. So what we need to do is introduce new staging tables and some drawings so that we can get an employee code to look up an employee dimension. Now this isn't straightforward. To do this we need to go from time record to a staff record based on staff ID. And then we need to draw from staff record to employee table based on user ID. So to do that I add a drawing and our first drawing is to the staff table. And here I want to pull through the user ID table and I want to define the join between the time record staging table and the staff staging table. So I was pasting the join there. So we're joining from the time record based on staff ID to the staff table based on staff ID. And we're pulling through the user ID column. Let's click OK there. I want to add another join now from the staff table to the employee table. So we're adding in a join to employee table. And we want to bring through the employee table. The join is like this. So basically we're joining from the staff table on based on user ID back to the employee table based on user ID. And this is how we join to the employee table and then to the employee table. So now I have these new joins, I can and I have some new data in my staging sources. I can then go back to our dimension lookups and choose to get the staging table employee and the employee code. To use to look up, oops, employee code, to look up my uh, employee code business key and the dimension when I'm processing the uh, primary book card. What if I wanted to connect to uh, the employee dimension more than once as a role play? So in this case, um, I'm going to join to the dim employee dimension again, and I'm going to call this the acting employee role play. So again, I need to go and edit, edit my ETL again, edit the transformation. And so I now have, uh, in my dimension lookups, I now have this active employee. Again, it's an employee code, but I don't want to use the same employee code from employee code, but that's not really going to work. I need to find out who was the active employee at the time that this time record was um, recorded. It's a little bit of a funny example, but it demonstrates um, role play dimensions. So, what I want to do is add a new join, and in this case I'm going to go into uh, the position table. I'm going to pull through the acting employee code that exists on the position table, and I'm going to use this join. So I'm going to join from the employee table based on employee code to the position table based on placement employee code, and pull from the position table the acting employee in that position that the first employee was the placement employee for. Okay, so now we've brought through some more data for this source for this uh, app, and I can go and update my lookup for the acting employee dimension. This time I want to choose uh, the position table and I want to join back on acting employee. Table. So in that way I've added uh, two new dimensions to this fact table. One will be called employee, one will be called acting employee, and uh, acting employee is just a different role play on the employee dimension. So again, I'll generate and deploy all the code. And you can go and see what that looks like. 
Okay, so uh, our generation is complete. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll show you what our data warehouse looks like now. Look at this. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we have our Ben and Perry. I'm looking at the columns of Ben and Perry. We have um, some new columns. So what we have is a parent employee code. So that's the business key of the parent code. Then we have a parent employee parent S key. And in our fact, we now have two new columns. One is the employee SP or employee surrogate key, so that's the relationship to the employee dimension record. And then we have a second relationship back to the employee dimension, but this time it's called the acting employee surrogate key or SP um, to show that role play um, relationship. Okay. So that's the end of lab three. Uh, and I hope that's uh, helped you understand how the model works in some more complex uh, scenarios.